Hello, Adrian. You're not still smelling my pillow, are you? You can't really smell me on that old thing. Sure I can. It's your strawberry shampoo. And the lilac lotion you always wore. <laughs> you never even liked that lotion. I love it now. I love it now. Trudy. It's so hard. I know it is. I screwed up bad. I, I let a suspect run right by me. You're doing the best you can. I'm so, so proud of you. Dr. Kroger gave me some pills. He said they might help. But I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of change. And I'm afraid of not changing. I'm afraid of change. I'm afraid of not changing. What do you think? I want you to be happy. That's all I've ever wanted. Be happy. Seriously, though, sir, are, are, are you married? Because that's a woman I would love to meet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was married. Her name was Trudy. She died. She was murdered. It was a car bomb. Oh, man, that sucks. Uh, may she rest in peace. Well, rest in pieces. I mean, at least my wife was buried in a coffin. What was Trudy buried in? A bunch of little snack bags. Oh Let me in there. Whoa, whoa, Max, take no, it no, easy. Seriously, you should have called me in. I could have helped you with the case. I'm great with jigsaw puzzles. Are you joking about Trudy? Adrian, I want to use the car now. Go for a drive. What's this button do? <laughs> Bet you needed a whole bunch of wipes that day, huh? Hey, by the way, you know the last thing that went through your wife's mind? The steering wheel! But seriously, Wait, I'm... Mr. Mom? Yeah! Wait, Mr. Mom? Go in! Mr. Mom! Oh, my God! Oh. No! Get out! Excuse me? Somebody owes me $10. Maria. Do I know you? I've been looking for you all night. For me? Why? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. 12, 14, 97. Oh, God, that was the day my wife died. It's the day I was reborn. At least that's how it felt. I had a disease, retinitis pigmentosa. I was going blind. And, and you I... had a cornea transplant from Trudy? That's right. Trudy Monk. My wife. I have her corneas. Trudy's eyes. Stay right there. Who the hell are you? You dropped this. At the store. What, what the hell are you talking about? I said stay back. I mean it. Hey, man.
minute I know you. You're the cop with the with the with the wife. <laughs> Kill me, huh? Like this, like a dog? Why? 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 I don't know why. I never know why. It was just a job. I didn't even know the lady. Who? Who hired you? Tell you that, I'm a dead man. You can't do it, can you? Yeah, it's not in you, I can tell. When a woman is killed, it's different. It hits him pretty hard. Because of Trudy? Yeah, because of Trudy. Trudy Monk, the love of Adrian Monk's life, and the only case he hasn't been able to solve. They met 28 years ago, while they were both attending the University of California. They were married a short time later. Trudy's love was so strong that most of his phobias and personal demons were kept at bay. It would be the happiest time of his life. Oh, you wouldn't recognize him. Back in the day, he loved his work, he loved his life. He used to come walking in here whistling. He hasn't whistled for a long time. Then, in a flash, she was gone. Two weeks before Christmas, 1997, Trudy Monk was downtown running some errands. She returned to her car in a parking garage on Somerset Avenue. Our top story tonight, the wife of a highly decorated San Francisco detective was killed this morning, the victim of an apparent car bombing. Trudy Monk, a 35-year-old freelance journalist, died a short time later at St. Jude's Hospital. Her husband, Adrian Monk, was by her side. The police are pursuing several leads, but have made no arrest. The case is still open. It has been Adrian Monk's obsession for 11 years. After the hospital, he came back, back home. He just sat in that chair all night. I could see his soul leaving his body. Adrian died too. The bomb was across town. But it killed my brother, too. I saw him coming apart like those rockets that hit the atmosphere at the wrong angle. Nothing I could do. So you can't talk about Trudy? You didn't leave your house for, what, three years? The psychiatrist said you'd never work again. But here you are, a hundred cases later. What keeps you going? I can't die until I know. That was really fun last night. I haven't been caroling since, I don't know, since college, I guess. I have to thank you for that. For what? Well, just making me do it. Getting me out of the house. You're welcome. And I have to thank you for that other thing, too. You know, marrying me. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm. Did you ever hear anything about that woman? What woman? Um, the midwife, Wendy something? I overheard you talking yesterday. Ah, Wendy Stroud. No, 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 not yet. No. 
It's been three days and looks like she's really missing. I was actually heading down to the, the clinic now. Talk to her boss. Mm. You forgot the onions. Did I? Are you okay? <laughs> Trudy? You know, it's really hard being married to a detective. I never get to have any secrets. I'm fine, it's nothing. Just a little overwhelmed. I got so much to do. Picking up medication for Ambrose. The bills are due. I've got two articles to proofread. It's just not enough time. Okay. Wait a minute. That's new. Just for me. Adrian, don't open that. I mean, come on, it's a surprise. Promise me? You won't open it till Christmas. Okay, okay, I won't open the digital watch. See, I'm putting it back. I love you. Can't imagine why. You've always idealized me. You know, you think I'm some kind of saint. <laughs> but, but, sweetheart, I am not perfect. I made a mistake. A big mistake. It was 15 years ago. Before we met, I had an affair. Oh. law professor and he was married at the time I swear I didn't know that but anyway oh. we um, well, I was pregnant disappointed. I didn't love him. I didn't even really know him. But I loved being pregnant. It was a girl. She was born January 2nd, 1983. She died the same day. <sighs> she lived for nine minutes. I never saw her. Professor, his name is Ethan Rickover, and Rickover, the remarkable Mr. Monk. Good to see you again. He's a judge now. He's just been nominated to the Court of Appeals, which is why I'm making this tape because the woman who's been missing all week, Wendy Stroud, she's the midwife who delivered my daughter. The missing midwife. 
the missing midwife. Uh, I, I don't know what to think. Tell me what to think. Let's just let it play. And Ethan called me yesterday. And it just out of the blue. I mean, I haven't talked to him in over 10 years. And he, he wants to meet me tomorrow. And I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm just being paranoid. <laughs> but there was just something in his voice. It just, oof. It scared me, you know? And Ethan has a, he has a dark side. I mean, I, I know it. I've seen it. I know what he's capable of. And anyway, that's why I'm making this tape. And if I'm wrong, which I'm sure I am, and nothing happens, then I'll just switch it out for that digital watch that you've been asking for. But if I'm right, and something happens, I wanted you to know everything. Because you deserve to know everything. Adrian, you are more than the love of my life. You are my life. You are.